Welcome to everybody who's just joining us on the recording. Tonight is, let me check the date, <laughs> Tuesday, October 28th, and um, this is a town hall session. Um, as we were joking before I turned on the recording, we've got Gilbert here as our sole representative from the students <laughs> section, so he's going to get some uh, good undivided attention tonight, and, and Kim is here as well. And so um, I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware we definitely are in the home stretch. We're closing in on about a month left in the program. Um, and so as far as our, my schedule personally, I am going to be at our AECT convention most of next week. Um, certainly from the 4th through the 9th, I'll have very limited availability. So if you do have any questions, um, please make sure you kind of hit me up early this week or um, please be willing to rely on what we can do through email as well as the discussion forum next week because, um, as I mentioned, I just really won't be around um, to, to offer any help. Um, our prototypes are due on November 10th, um, and this is where you'll take the feedback you got from your written design plans and convert that into um, a prototype using our PowerPoint template that hopefully everybody is familiar with and that's nothing surprising. Then we'll go through a similar review and feedback cycle like we just completed with our design plans, but we'll use the prototypes as the subject of our review. It, it tends to take a couple weeks uh, to get that done. As you know, it takes about a week for everybody to offer their feedback, and then as fast as I can get it compiled and back to everybody so it makes sense. Um, so I budgeted about 14 days um, for that to happen. Um, and then we're going to um, have two more quick little reflections just to make sure we're all on the page, find, same page. If anybody has individual questions, that's usually a great place for us to find out about it during those reflections. Um, those are due on the 17th and then the 8th. And then uh, we'll just uh, be looking for everybody's final deliverables on December 8th. So, Kim, did you have any other comments or questions? Does that work for you as far as your dates when you're available? I'm assuming with a holiday coming up with Thanksgiving and other things. Did these dates work out for you okay? Uh, they should be fine, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, Sandy, did, uh, did you want to tell Kim a little bit about your video that you created? And, and um, maybe you have a chance to ask her generally what your questions are, and we'll, I'll give Kim an opportunity to go look at it um, based on the link that's in the, um, on the screen here. But why don't you kind of give, a little, give us a little overview of the video you created. Um, it's, this is a video that um, demonstrates to students um, how to use the calculator that they will have on the um, test. Uh, it's exactly the same. So and it'll just show them how to uh, key in those quantities, where to go. It's, you know, it's hidden a little bit behind a second menu and all of that. So it kind of talks through that. I also tried to tie in our overarching uh, example that we're using um, so that it kind of flows, I hope. But it, you know, it's about seven minutes or so, I think. And I wondered if it was too long or maybe I needed to break it apart or whatever. So I was just asking for some guidance. And Kim, you probably haven't um, had a chance to see it. It's in our, the, you know, the discussion forums and then under the facilitator forum is uh, where she's posted the link. So, but go ahead. Yeah, I did not have a chance to take a look at that. Um, so I will, I'll have to do that. And this is in which, Sandy, I'm sorry, which one are you working on? Um, we're working on permutations and combinations. Okay. I will actually... Um, and this, this is a question actually that's come up a, a couple times related to the calculator. I think we've come to the conclusion and we've talked about it that the students are going to be using the actual calculator in practice in your facility, but when they're on the test, it's the on-screen calculator. Is that correct? Here's what's interesting. They just changed it. Okay. Well, we have... So I think, I think they have realized because, sure, people have been complaining that the online calculator is so awkward to use that they are now allowing the students, I think as of Friday, they are allowing the students to come in with their own calculator. Wow. They don't have to use the online one. The problem is that online one takes up actually like half of the screen. Wow. So they're having a problem because they'll have to minimize it and then they have to open it up again and then they have to minimize it. So it just was so cumbersome to use uh, that they actually are able to bring their own in now. 
So what do you, th I mean, are we confident enough or are you confident enough that they will only, they won't reverse this, I guess, or do you think we should hedge our bets and continue to kind of give them feedback on how to use the uh, on-screen calculator or are you going to mainly advise them to bring their own calculators? Well, will they, do they have to bring the same calculator? That would be my question. Because the one I'm demonstrating is, it's the online one, but it's also the one they, they actually have, right? It's the one they actually have, yes. So I, I think the demonstration, even though I'm demonstrating it online, it's still, it's the same calculator. So I think, okay. I mean, I think it would be useful, but you, Excellent. you tell me. Perfect. That's great. Okay. I was, I was concerned because I, I, okay, go ahead. I'll let you two talk it out. Go ahead, Kim. Sorry. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Um, I will have Courtney take a look at the video tomorrow. And then we can send you some feedback. Um, and definitely I'll find out if how, you know, if breaking it up would be better. I'll ask her that question tomorrow. And, and Sandy, okay, also when I re reviewed it, it looks like you're also tying it into your unit as well as part of the scenario and example. Is that correct? That Yes, that's correct. That was sort of the idea to just kind of keep that flowing and help them keyed in on the idea which I, I think that's was, perfect yeah. it sounds like a perfect idea to me yeah I liked it for that reason too it, it wasn't like you were just replicating one of the other videos that you can stumble on out there as far as how to use the like um, calculator it was definitely tied into your unit which I thought was a strength so that's great and as I think that's good did you have anything else, Sandy or Gilbert, as long as you're both, we're kind of focused on your unit right now? Was there anything particular to the feedback you received or um, any other questions that may have come up along the way? I don't really have any questions. I'm, I've changed courses on a couple of things. Um, the idea of a matching test turned out to be not... Um, not as easily feasible as I thought, but I came up with an alternative I think that's going to, that will give the same feedback, but in a different way. And I think it will actually be easier for students to use, so. Okay. Okay. Um, and it looks like um, we've got a lot of um, folks from other groups. I, we've got um, Paige, uh, is I would think, dialing in, and Zhu Yang is um, joining us as well on the same team. Um, so I was just going to give folks the opportunity to ask any questions, and then I had some general feedback that I thought may be helpful as we kind of summarize all the feedback. Did, did you want to add anything, Paige, or, or for your team, or Sue? Can I just talk? I'm yeah. not real familiar with it. Yep, go ahead. Oh, oh okay. We I have it up to my ear, and I'm like, can they hear me crunching on my boots? <laughs> no, Sorry. We can, no, I didn't hear you um, crunching, but we can hear you talking. Good, because I'm sitting here eating. Um, this is Paige. Um, I guess, Jen, one of the things you wanted to clarify, you sent us a document last Ooh. week. Um, emailed us a document. We were supposed to ask about that. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, hang on one second. I'm having, um, let me get, we have someone else dialing in that they're having trouble. They're trying to ping me one okay. quick second. Jennifer, I, this is Bonnie. I just dialed in. Okay. Oh, good. Hmm. That's, good. That's good. Okay. And I've got uh, Jill's trying to find the, uh, <laughs> the way to get in as well. Um, yeah. And actually, Kim, could you kind of clarify? I think, and actually it may have been, it may have been Courtney's feedback to theirs, but they had the hamburger. Um, I think it was ha having to do with that, using that as a, some type of an organizer. And so, mm -hmm. Kim, I think you had sent an example of what you used. And I think the concern was, and if you could maybe explain, Paige, um, as well, as we're kind of going through this, what your ideas were, because I think there was this mm -hmm. um, question of, is this maybe too juvenile of a concept? And if we kind of go sure. to this ham hamburger thing. And so... I think that's aligning the two issues. And then I think Kim was saying, well, here's what we use um, in lieu of that. But go ahead. Did you want, Kim, did you want to clarify what that sample was that you had me forward on to them? Yeah, that is, um, that is the organizer that we have them use. The, I think the, um, I think the hamburger is a great, um, like a, a visual mm -hmm. for them to build on but the way they actually organize it is the organizer that we give them is the one that I sent to you so anytime they have an extended response they 
they ha are required in our classroom to use that organizer in order to organize their thoughts and then to then write their their full um, their full response. Okay. Um, I guess my question is if our and maybe it's part of us not fully understanding our I hope you know, I want to get this straight now, but we're creating an outline. The outline in and of it, you know, is part of the organization of their writing. So how do you want the outline we create to look different than the organizer that you sent us? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, you know, you're talking about your top bun is the same thing yes, yes. as what my thesis statement is. Exactly, then, yeah. You're talking about your hamburger and the lettuce, tomato, onions, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, being the two, you know, the two sides that we have, like topic number mm -hmm. one, topic number two, and then your sure. bottom bun being that conclusion paragraph. For sure. So, it's, it's kind of the same. I understand what you're saying is the concept is mm -hmm. like a hamburger. Mm -hmm. And so I think so, the concept sorry. was fine, but to tell them, you know, to include that they're going to use our, our organizer. Okay, that's good to know because, like I said, we didn't know that going in. We didn't have that. Um, so basically what we're doing is teaching them how to take a prompt and complete your organizer. Is that correct? Yes, using the same thing that, that using the same concept as you just said. And I am fine uh -huh. with you using that concept to say, you know, think uh -huh. of it as a, you know, a hamburger. Uh-huh. And that's kind of, I think, we just want them to practice with several yes. kinds of prompts is kind of yeah. what our thoughts are and whichever organizer works best for them. I don't know if um, if Shui would rather, you know, has anything to add to that. We uh, just want to give you guys something that you'll you can use and is good. So any any guidance is welcomed. Um I don't know if I can provide any more clarity than I did. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Bonnie? Bonnie, can you maybe jump in? Um, I think when we uh, looked at that, one of the things, Kim, that uh, you said that it would be how it would be fine to use that on one slide as an illustration, but mm -hmm. for the for fully developing the um, module, you want to use the graphic and the, the uh, that you had provided. But the same kinds of subtopics that go into the hamburger can also go into the graphic that you used. Just you would not use you wouldn't use the hamburger as an extended analogy. You, okay. I mean, if you wanted to keep it, you could keep it, use it as one illustration, and then uh, go with the graphic that says. But when you're developing an extended response, use. Uh, you know the one provided by the client, and that, uh, okay. and so all the details are exactly the same. It's just that you're not using terms like lettuce and tomato and so forth. <laughs> okay. okay, sure. All right. I'm going to mute my phone. Okay. So, and then you know that's probably a good thing to talk about. So, um, so does that does that sit well with you guys, like Paige and your team? Does that does that work for for what I, you were thinking of or? Yeah, I think now that we have the um, the document that was sent to us, you know, we didn't have it before we did the design plan. Okay. I think we can shift directions. Okay. Because I think it sounds like so you you can still use that. It sounds like, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, and certainly not Kim's, but it sounds like you you were pretty pleased with that that being kind of a, a mental image that the student would have as far as how they're building mm -hmm. building this through this idea of this the hamburger. But you were just. And I think I was a little concerned, and maybe maybe too concerned, that it could be too juvenile of an example and not necessarily align with uh, the way you're also covering the topic with this organizer sure. that you have. Is that is that a fair summary? That is that is spot on. Okay, 
So okay. it sounds like go for it, but like, and, and I think I even said in my feedback to the team, I said, I sort of envision like, like a cartoonish little slinky hamburger, like dancing across uh -huh. the screen. And so I was like, let's try to avoid that, but like continue with the yeah. analogy. But, um. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because when we first started teaching writing, the only thing we could find was a hamburger organizer. And it's something that they use in like sixth grade to teach how to write a, a response to an essay prompt and I can remember people saying to me this is so juvenile and so when I saw the hamburger and I thought oh gosh I can't go back to that <laughs> my yeah. students oh, okay. will protest that's, that's great and it's really funny many students have said um, as well and I'm sure some that are on the call right now that as they've gone to find open educational resources not necessarily aligning with the hamburger example but most of the stuff that people can find on the subject area, it tends to be for, you know, geared to a K-12 audience. And so those are the types of decisions I think a lot of teams are facing as they try to um, adapt strategies and, and even instructional materials to a, our adult audience. So, Well, and that is the number one reason that we need all of these resources. Because for the most part, the only things that we can find are or children. So all of the modules that you are creating is because the only things that we can find out there as open education resources are for children. Especially like designing an experiment, you know, th those kind of things. It's concepts that they learn very early in school that our students either never learned or never retained. And so that's why it's so important to get this you know, that this, these projects that you're working on to give these to an adult audience. Right. Um, and I don't know if we have, I haven't seen Cynthia join us. Um, I, don't, I don't know, she could be calling in. But um, she had a question just generally on the template, and I just wanted to clarify, and Bonnie, if you have any other thoughts as well. This is a question that came in the discussion forum. She was wondering if they needed to use each and every slide that was in the template, and my comments back were, um, no, the template is just offered to ensure that, the, that there's formatting consistency. We're certainly not mandating, like, how you sequence your right. lesson. Um, and just no, ab oh. absolutely, I agree, Jennifer. It's not a sequence. It's a tip. It's a type. So the only sequence is like the beginning and the end. The other ones are examples. So, you know, at the beginning you have the opening, the title slide, and then the objectives, and then at the very end there were the, the summary and the references and so forth. But all the rest of those, and by the way, I'm babysitting, so if you hear little kids. <laughs> Okay, uh, um, so you, uh, the major thing was to try to have some uh, examples of types of, uh, of, of slides, yeah. okay? Perfect, and I think um, I mentioned it before, but just to absolutely clarify, and I hope we haven't gone too far to the other direction, but on the first pilot, we really didn't know how to address this idea of um, having a style guide and we wanted to also give students a lot of freedom to try to create these, and so we had asked the pilot group to come up with a style guide, and unfortunately that kind of got lost in translation. It never really happened, and so when we got the deliverables back, it was a bit of a free-for-all as far as what we, we saw and completely lacked consistency. So like I said, I hope we haven't swung the pendulum too far in the other direction, but um, we're, these are just you know basically offered saying, um, do the best as you can as you're presenting your material to use these fonts, to, you know, to lay out your page in generally this um, format um, and in using the style guide. So things are in a, look in a fairly consistent manner rather than people using different templates and colors and fonts and, and it doesn't look like we're coming from the same uh, frame of reference. So that's really where this is right. all coming from. Right. And the other thing about using PowerPoint, if you use it in its presentation mode, the intent is uh, you, generally for a large classroom so that somebody in the back of the room can see it. But this is going to be viewed on a computer screen, so that's why we reduce the title, the heading, and the print, because uh, and that way uh, it's consistent throughout, and, and you don't change from 16 to 36 on the next page for the content um, and the titles and so forth. So it just makes the reading consistent and uh, the, the student is suddenly shocked with a 44 heading, you know, in, in this, uh, so forth. Okay. 
That's perfect. Thank you. And then Helen, I don't think um, is is here yet, or um, if she is, I, I'm sorry. Actually, Helen, I just call, I called in. I for, I for went to the computer because it wasn't working, so I'm just on the phone. Excellent. Okay. And Helen, we're at your slide about. Um, you had mentioned that in an email to me that you were going to um, ask some questions to confirm um, the subject matter for simple and compound probability. So did you want to take a well, shot at that? Actually, what would be best for me if, if it works for either Bonnie or whomever would be the one to ask is when I get the final stuff, um, I, I want to make sure that I'm accurate about what I'm saying is a compound and what I'm saying is simple, et cetera. And so... Um, rather than try to go through everything right now on the phone, is there somebody that I can send that to so they we can make sure? Yeah, that that one's not me this time. That one is Kim and, <laughs> and okay. Courtney. Okay. Yeah, that for would accurate. be really for Courtney. Yeah. Um, okay. You can you can email those, uh, Jennifer, if they if you want to email those, and sure. Courtney can reply back. That would be great. Is it okay, Kim, if I give Helen um, the e her email directly? Um, you can give everybody our email. Okay. We're fine with answering questions. Are you sure? I've we'll been just... very like hesitant. <laughs> there are more no, of us no. than only the two of you. I Listen. won't abuse it. <laughs> no, we would rather have that, Jennifer. And then, um, you know, and we'll just copy you on those back and forth. Excellent. Okay, so very good. So everybody else sends you. Makes me very nervous. Please be kind. <laughs> Please be kind to them, um, especially given that um, I'm going to be out away most of next week, and I don't want to be a you know gatekeeper that holds up the flow of things. So that that would be great. So it sounds like Helen to answer your question, and be Courtney is your subject matter expert on that one. Okay, so. great, thank you. And then there was a question, Kim. Um, there were another question. I don't know if you see it in the chat room. Do you have any other materials um, that you usually use to teach the students writing? Is there anything else that you'd like the students to consider incorporating within their units? Um, I do have one other thing that we use. It's just a simple thing um, with unpacking a prompt, but I, I don't know if that's really, if they'll really use that, but I can, but I can email that out to, to them. Okay. That would be great. Do you guys want to at least see it and see how it would possibly work within your unit? We'll, we'll go from there. Sure. Okay. Um, let's see what other teams do we have uh, that are represented here. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Did. Like I said, I don't know if, if uh, Cynthia or Greg are here, but if you have any questions, Jennifer, uh, when uh, while you're looking for that, this is Bonnie again. Sure. Uh, and somebody, I know that the students are asking about the slides. Now, one of the teams did say that they found a, a macro that could allow for drag and drop. Did uh, that was that me, person, Helen. Yeah, Helen, that was Helen. That, yeah. You want to give a uh, you want to give us a run through of what that is, Helen? That would be it, terrific to be able to incorporate yeah. that. Yes, I. What I found, and it's on quite a few um, educational sites and used by teachers and all of that, so it doesn't look to me like it's any kind of Trojan horse or something that's going to be detrimental. It involves um, uploading his, he's created a PowerPoint that has the macro in it, so you upload it and then just plug in your content and the macro is invisible in the background so that when you run it, um, you're able to click on an object and drag it over and drop it. It's not exactly the same as, as regular drag and drop, but it does give you the capability yeah. of, of creating a drag and drop type exercise. And since they had said part of the new design of the GED is going to incorporate that, it seemed like it might be right. good to try to that have be. that as part of the training. So Helen, the question I have, this is Bonnie, yes. is that would if, would that PowerPoint that you upload, are you able to incorporate that and, and uh, integrate it into the uh, template that we have? I can, yes. I believe what I can do is, um, in uh, what's the word, copy and paste the template right. into his PowerPoint that has the macro and then send it to you. Um, so that you, because he also has a few screens in there that tell you, here's how you do this and here's how you do that. So I don't want to just only leave your template in case there's um, questions you might have about how to um, 
implement the drag and drop. So would that work for you to just cut and paste well, it into it and then send you the whole thing? Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, this time anything should go through Jennifer or, okay. or post, post it, and then Jennifer and I would take a look at it and see, okay. because we want to make sure that we provide it to everybody else. Yeah. But I would like, have you, have you tried an example for your own yes. module? Yes. Okay. I, I, yes. Yeah, you know what might cool. be um, great, um, Helen. There's a, a section in the, um, and this is I'm assuming it's a link that take, will take us to somebody's website, right, where we can get the macro. Is that correct? Um, you can do it that way. I was thinking that I could just take the template that that Bonnie sent that it is already a PowerPoint and copy and right. paste that into his PowerPoint so the macro is already installed in the template. Okay, if that would be easier, that'd be great. If you want to send that to me as yeah. an attachment, that's great. Um, yeah, and I then do that. that would be fine. Yeah. Um, that, that, yeah, let's give that a whirl. We'll give that a try. And then we'll figure out yeah. a way to and, upload that. And then Jennifer will let me know. And, yeah. Right, and I, I, Jennifer, you'll let me know, and then I'll take a look at it. We'll both see how it works, and because we want to provide it to everybody, uh, that would okay. be if, if it works. So, yeah, we'll give okay. a test on a, a couple. Bonnie and I'll give it a test. That sounds good. Okay. Um, I also great, Helen. Yeah, that's great. Um, I also see mm -hmm. um, Ensign's here. Um, Ensign, did you have any questions? She and I know you and I are going to meet on Thursday as well with your partner, Sean, but is there any questions you had that you wanted to ask about? Hmm? Nope, I guess not. Um, but I just wanted to give people a sense because I think that this process of our feedback and review was not only helpful, hopefully, for the, the individual design teams, but I hope it was also helpful for you to be able to, as a student, to be able to see the work pr pr um, produced by others, which would help hopefully inform your future work on a design team. And so, as I said, we had 32 completed surveys, and of that, 11 were from students. And so, Bonnie, um, and then either Kim or Courtney, and then myself mm -hmm. each looked at every design plan. So you have feedback from all of us on each design plan. And then, as I said, each student um, should have had then the opportunity to offer at least one team um, feedback, which again, like I said, I hope was helpful. Um, and then I just wanted to spend just a little bit of time um, talking about some of the feedback that I did notice. And I'm not sure it was clear. It, given that I guess I saw it came up a, a several times, I wanted to make sure that we covered it as a group. And um, if you notice here, it's, it shows the area where it says needs work, and I've got, got it highlighted in yellow. And it was kind of a broken record on a lot of the design plan feedback. We have a very unique design case here in that we have the CCR standards, which again are the college and career readiness standards, and then we have the GED materials. And that really and very much helps inform the scope and the content that we provide because unlike most design uh, opportunities you have, we really are helping people prepare for the GED test. And so uh, let's use that and let's try to make sure as we're trying to decide what content we include and what assessment strategies we use and what practice opportunities we use, that we do keep an eye toward what the GED is asking of our students. And so very often in the, when I was looking through like the purpose statements or um, as I go ahead here, also to looking at the scope and the topic, um, I would make a comment saying, let's do our best to try to find the specific GEDs and or CCR standard that we're working toward and make sure that the lesson that we're designing aligns with that standard. And um, it's just a, a kind of a, a cool, in my opinion, happenstance <laughs> that we have all this material because normally in the real world design world, no one is handing you a set of standards saying that you need to design to that. So as long as we have it, we may as well uh, take advantage of it. And I think ultimately it will make our design stronger. Um, but I, I think it, it might be a good time too. Kim or Bonnie, were there any kind of macro things that you saw in the designs that you wanted to make sure that we, we talked about as long as we have most of the group together tonight, things that you liked and or things in, um, in, in contrast that maybe you'd like the groups, the group to consider amending? Um, I, one of the things, I mean, there were a couple of designs that I thought were at, at a, uh, well, everybody did a great job. I mean, I, I, it, there was a lot of thought put into it, 
and I, I just felt that uh, in reviewing these, because uh, I've reviewed hundreds of design documents throughout my career, and uh, there was just a lot of thought uh, put into these. One of the things that I don't think that we've made real clear is about um, objectives and how objectives have to make sure that those objectives are aligning to what's going to be assessed. That's number one. Is that you always want to make if you have an uh, objective in there, uh, you want to make sure that at, by the end you've assessed it either through practice or some sort of quiz or test. The other one is that some people use the condition uh, for the um, uh, objective, and some people didn't. So Jennifer, are we going to try to have the condition, uh, which is you know the the Sort of the full part of an objective, or are we just going to start it at the at the verb? It's fine mm -hmm. with me. Ask Kim and Jennifer, you guys. Uh, we, we, I just think we should have consistency in that area. That's the second thing, and the third one, and we'll come back to that in a second. But the third one I, that I wrote about objectives is that, I want, uh, and I tried to advise this to my clients throughout, is to avoid saying the students or the learners will. Because we we can't promise that they will, but we can say that they should be able to based on what they've been taught. So, I, those were the three comments I made about objectives. Okay, it's it's really funny, Bonnie. I think I even mentioned to some of the students. I, I definitely consider you our objective writer expert <laughs> because it's just not something I you know I, I focus on. I, I mainly look at objectives in terms of what I hope the learner will be able to do when they walk out the door. And so I use it more as a guiding principle for me as a designer than necessarily what I care is written, you know, to the to the students. So I wasn't, um, and, and again, maybe it's something we need to look at. I was not looking at it nearly to the level you are. Clearly, you're the expert in this area. I was more looking at it from a more macro sense, like what do we really want to make sure the learner is able to do um, as they prepare to sit down at the GED test. So I was kind of looking at each unit right. on that basis. So. Um, Kim, I don't and know. I you. Agree. And I agree. And I definitely agree with that. I mean, we certainly want to make sure that it, it aligns with the GED objective and with the assessment that, so that assessment and GED objective have to be aligned within the module. I'm just saying that, that it's a minor, it may seem like a minor thing, but if you don't get out of the habit of saying the student will be able, instead of just saying the student should be able to. And mm -hmm. I, I did cite the. Uh, the shock and Cassarelli who uh, use a uh, legal uh, uh, right. uh, consultants <laughs> right, that, right. that are saying because people literally when they get into the real world uh, the TSA has been sued for saying that you will be able wow. to accomplish this. <laughs> You're yes. kidding. Wow. And no, no. People have sued that says because you promised that I would be able to, <laughs> be able and to I, do didn't, this. I didn't pass my test. <laughs> And so, so just think of a, you know, <laughs> to get out of the hat and just say uh, that they should, you know, they should, should, be, they able should be able to do this. Right. <laughs> right. And Kim, I don't know, what do okay, you, but, what do you, what, do you have any thoughts on objectives, how they're written one way or the other? And, and I'll, again, like I said, I'll talk to Bonnie about kind of getting a standardized some verbiage down, but mm -hmm. go ahead, Kim, did you have any thoughts? No, Bonnie is, uh, Bonnie is the objective. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I think, definitely okay, not. I, I totally well, defaulted to her. In okay. Mind, so. Well, I guess the thing is, is that the students, the designers, should be aware of the conditions. But I, I think that we don't have to say the conditions. So, uh, but you should be aware of what conditions under which those students will, or those learners will accomplish this objective. So, I guess I think we can agree that all objectives then will start with a verb. Instead of saying, um, given a calculator, the the, uh, the learner should be able just to simply say, uh, okay, like calculate or estimate. We'll just start with the objective should start with the verb. Okay. Can we all agree on that? That sounds good. And maybe Bonnie, what would be great is if we. Maybe if we took a few of the samples and we'll send them out as an X. I'm assuming 99% of people right now are completely confused at well, what we're talking about. Well, so maybe actually, what it's, we'll it's do in is... the style. It's in the style. Guide okay, so look, what I'll do, everybody, that, just, that, I'll, I'll, that I'll send a, a sample out to everybody um, just to make sure you know we're, we're phrasing them in, in a similar manner. And like I mm -hmm. said, I, I, I joked right. with almost, I think almost every design plan, I said I am 
the worst person probably on the planet to talk to about written objectives because I actually I tend not to even use them. I use them more for my own guiding principles, so rather than mm -hmm. <laughs> something that well, I include. In I mean, them. yeah, but actually, I mean, in a constructivist view, they're saying don't even put them in at all. Right. But right, the right. GED. But the GED is not using the constructivist view, okay? Right, <laughs> They're right. using the behavioral, cognitive mm -hmm. view of learning. And so that's what we need to follow. Right. So, so we'll give everybody some samples, and then you could work off of those, um, you know, just to clarify where they are within the style guide. Um, and Jennifer? Yeah, this is go Helen. ahead. You're not the worst because I just had a subject matter expert um, whose only feedback for the plan I gave him was to change the objectives he erased the verbs and put, the student will understand. Oh, oh dear. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. So I just had to laugh. Okay, there you go. Okay, so maybe there is one person in the planet worse than me. It's the one that anyone who would use understand, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I you can't measure understand. I definitely look for those action words. What are they going to be? Uh, right, doing? right. So, excellent. And then I think we're pretty square on this. And I just wanted to make um, a little bit of a, a clarification. I just shared this, the Merrill's uh, First Principles instruction. I'm not sure if folks are familiar with this, but I just know when I read this way back when, um, this article by Merrill, it, light bulbs just popped off in my head. And I very much view what he's trying to say. And I really hope if you have the, the time to read through the entire article in its entirety, he's not forwarding this as an instructional design model. He's not forwarding this as saying that this is how all instruction should flow. He's basically saying, I've been in this field for decades and decades, read all the articles from behaviorists, con cognitivists, co constructivists. These are the general guiding principles that are shared by most of the isms. And so you're basically, and this is a, not coming from Merrill, but he's basically saying your instruction probably won't suck. <laughs> Those are my words, not his, if you include these principles as part of your instruction. So that's why I jokingly refer to this as like our 80-20 rules of instruction. So if you generally have a, a period where um, somewhere in your instruction that you're relating it to the activation piece, which is tying it back to what the learner already knows, that you're in including some form of quality demonstration, you're embedding your entire instruction in some type of relevant problem or task, um, and that you're giving the learners ample opportunities for application and then integration. So when we were going through then our review process, I was using these principles to kind of guide our assessment of your, um, your learner engagement strategies. So I just, I know some people had some questions like, what is this all about first principles? Do we have to follow this to the letter? That's certainly not my intention. It's just saying that, as I said, if you if you do these five things somewhere embedded within your um, your instruction, it probably will lead to effective outcomes, and um, and that's really all it's all about. I, I think it's just a and again, maybe it's just me. <laughs> maybe I'm, maybe others don't find, don't find it to be such an epiphany when they read it. Um, but it really turned on some light bulbs for me as far as what really ultimately are we trying to engage our learners in as they're um, going through our instruction we design. Um, and then I'm going to send this out as a PDF. We, we we're kind of running out of time here. I don't need to spend a ton of time on these. But I did highlight, and I'll send it out in this PowerPoint uh, PDF, the areas that need work were kind of um, jumped out at me in, a, in some places. And I think it becomes our Achilles heel as designers. Um, where we start seeing this needs work for where, where many teams um, had feedback in, in terms of needing to look at activation, um, which we talked about again as being where we're trying to tie in the learner's prior experience to these new things that were the skills and knowledge. And so that's just, again, a, a very much an Achilles heel for instructional designers in general, because we very much tend to get concentrated on the new content that we want the learners to, as Helen said, understand. <laughs> and so what ends up happening is we just tend to spend a lot of time on presentation and demonstration and saying, here, learn this, learn this, and not taking this time to step back and say, well, what do they already know? How can we embed this instruction within a scenario that, that will be relatable to our learners? And, um, and some of the other things we, that came out of, oops, I'm, I skipped ahead here. Um, 
of this, the strategy piece. Uh, let's see if I can find it. No, it's not jumping off at me. Hang on a second. Here we go. Um, the application piece. So that's giving them opportunities to practice. There was some uh, pretty consistent feedback in that area that it needed work across the board. This is these are again general statements. And then um, also the integration piece. So this is where we're giving the learners the opportunity to disp display their new skills and knowledge, often, I guess, as part of the assessment piece. And so, I'm, again, adding these kind of macro comments just because I see this consistently. When we use the same, same type of feedback um, and evaluation format in the classes that I teach at Old Dominion, again, these t tend to be the Achilles heels of designers. We, very, we are very good at honing in on the content we want to make sure that we get across to the learners and we tend to spend less of our effort where it probably is, is needed in terms of getting the learners to practice and think of ways that they're going to be using this um, instruction and this material in the, in the intended purpose, which again for our students is the GED test. So again, just wanted to make sure everybody is kind of aware where this whole feedback schematic came from and why I find it so important for us to focus in on these things. Um, did anybody, as we get kind of winding down here with about 10 minutes left, um, I really don't have that many more little bullet points I wanted to cover, but I want to make sure since we have everybody here, that people have a chance to ask any questions. We good on the due dates of things? Was there anything surprising that came through on your feedback that you wanted a chance to ask about? No? Okay. Well, I think that's about it. I, um, the other things that are here. Oh, I, I kind of said I was done, but I did want to talk about this. Another thing that I tagged on within the feedback form was this whole affective considerations, which are a little bit hard to, um, for us to be able to assess within a design plan because we really don't get a, a clear understanding of um, how things are going to um, be displayed within your prototype. So this is one area we'll, we'll really focus in on on the next round of feedback, making sure that we're arousing curiosity, we're establishing relevance, and that we're incorporating appropriate levels of challenge and maintaining the learner's attention. So these, even though it was included in the last uh, evaluation piece, it's something we'll probably drive home even more on the next piece of things. So Kim, did you have any more marching order, orders for us as we head into the prototype stage? Um, yeah, again, just as people, especially over the week that you're gone, if people have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Courtney or I, you know, via email. Um, we don't we don't have a problem with that at all right now. Um, so that's that's fine with us. And just everybody, just thank you so much for all the work you're doing. We just have no idea how much I, we appreciate this work, and I know that it's you know it takes a lot of your time and, um, but we just we just so appreciate it. Well, I, I will underscore that too, Kim. Um, that uh, as student designers or whether however what level your experience is this just continues to build on your experience. And so one of the things I think that you'll benefit from is getting feedback from different uh, voices, uh, you know, from the content experts and then from Jennifer and um, Jill and me is that uh, there, we all have a slightly different perspective. But when you go into the real world, that is exactly what you will have is that it, rather than having one client, you often have a committee of clients. <laughs> and, and and you have to find the way in which to you know find out what is the key things that are the most important and I tell you usually in the especially for the real world of corporation is that it's relevance uh, they they want to have practice and relevance they want it to be relevant to how they will perform either on a test or in a, in a job and so those are that that is absolutely key Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you. And one last call. I'm going to be quiet for 10 seconds and last call for questions. Oh. 
Okay. No calls for questions. I gave you a chance. So what I'm going to do next is uh, when I hang up here, I'll, I'll send out a blast email um, giving everybody everybody's emails. I was very hesitant to do that. But I will do that. And then also just to wrap, wrap up, Bonnie and I will take a peek at the, um, the template from Helen. Um, we'll give you some sample um, examples of objectives. And I think that's about all I owe you. Uh, do you, Jennifer, are you writing up the objectives, or is that something you wanted me to do? What do you? What do you? You want know what I'll do, do through. I'll do what you said, Bonnie. You said it's in the style guide, so I'll pull out where it is in that section. Well, and the, the, yeah, it's right at the very beginning. It's just words. Mm -hmm. It's not sentences. But I mean, it says like use, identify, recall, examine, explain, describe, compare, and so forth. And then do not use. But I don't have any sentences. So you can go to the taxonomy that has a link that shows the different levels, but um, Perfect. You, you tell me. Yeah. That's okay. perfect. You know what I'll do, Bonnie? I'll send you some samples using one of our units, right. and then um, okay. I'll just have you take take a, a once over and sure. see if you sign off on it, and then we'll kind of go from there as our, sure. our desired sure. format. That's perfect. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. thank you, everybody, for spending your, your night with us tonight. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for arranging all of this. Uh, you're, you're amazing. No, no. Don't be silly. Okay. <laughs> and I'll see, I guess, Paige for sure. And anybody else going to AECT? No, but have fun. Okay, great. See you guys. <laughs> we'll all be jealous of you guys in Florida. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh, we'll be busy. <laughs> we'll be busy. Okay, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great okay. night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right,